your pool tight and tense. This is the tournament for you. He's missed it by a mile. We are seeing all kinds of mistakes when the pressure is on. The quarterfinals beckon. There's the nine going in. Finger. This is turning into a classic. You cannot write that script. What a comeback. Three quarter finals down, one to go in the Morningside Arena. Here's a reminder of the story so far. Three matches concluded with one semi final lineup complete. The Dutch and the Filipinos making the most of the same winning margin, the Netherlands winning 9 5 against China, the Philippines beating Canada by the same scoreline. Austria dominated in their game with Greece and will play the winners of our last remaining quarter final, Spain against the hosts, Great Britain A. The opening two racks saw these two keep pace with each other, but the third saw Great Britain break. With little on offer, safety play ensued, but a mistake on the two ball seemed to give Spain an opportunity. But they fluffed their lines on the six, and Great Britain A stepped in to claim the rack. In the next rack, a dry break saw a tactical exchange between these two, with Spain eventually coming out on top to level the score. This is now the fifth, Commentary from Phil Yates and Jeremy Jones. Rack number yeah, five. I would have we to are say probably two -two. position play Great has Britain been the is breaking. mistake the most. We've seen some misses, that's for sure. But okay, Jason changing a little bit here. All right, he kind of going to the U.S. Open break. I think the cue ball is going to stand up, but not much of an offensive play on the two, and just at first glance, field not an easy safety either. I don't think he can easily get the two by the six. Um, uh, can he now can he cut the two super thin just down in between the four six and let the cue ball come over on the other side of the table behind the seven eight nine. I think that's OK. I don't think the side pocket scratch is there if he's cutting it that thin. Could be wrong. Oh, and that's a clever shot. Now he may leave a little gap, but still it was a pretty clever shot. And he did leave a gap, that's for sure. But I, I think that's a more settled Chris Melling. He made a nice stroke on that, a nice commitment to the shot. Just so happened the two ball and the cue ball. They ran a good five feet apiece and just just fell right in between the eight and nine. Okay, and this is another big mistake. 
Man, you have to really look what the premium is, meaning the center of the end rail was the premium, gave you all the room for error, and now they've overrun it again. Yes, with those four balls to hide behind, the four, the nine, the seven, and the eight, that was a massive zone in which to drop. Massive. Extension, please. No excuse for that whatsoever. And I think he's left Jason if he goes firm. This is a natural scratch in the opposite corner, so he's going to elevate to try and avoid the scratch. Good thing about this, you might drop underneath the three and not have position, but if you miss, good chance of safety. Scrappy right now, a match that has yet to take off. The touch paper has not been lit. Well, you can see there on the replay, it wasn't hit horribly. Caught both the points on the upper left-hand corner. Extension, please. Now, this is a touchy one. He, he could kind of roll through on, this, on the two and go right into the seven with the cue ball. If you're confident with that type of shot and use the eight to, as a, some type of snooker. Oh, he's elevating. So he's banking the two around. He's trying to draw the cue ball up behind them balls. He's trying to bank the two by the three. So a nice shot. Oh, wow. And this is really cut off Great Britain. Ironic, really, because he had a much easier chance to lay a snooker in the third rack. Didn't manage it. Left the six ball on, and from there, Great Britain won the rack to lead 2-1. That was perfectly played. Foul, no well, rail. That was a much more difficult safety. Ruiz laid down. He missed an easy one. Start the clock, please. On the six ball earlier, and kind of that kind of happens in sport. Period. It's the easy ones that get away from you. The ones that are more difficult kind of grab your attention a bit more, and you, you seem to focus. Yes. Now you might be wondering why was that a foul? Well, he did hit the two. Yes, fortuitously, but there was no rail made contact with after the hit and so consequently it is ball in hand anyway. Okay, so he's left him plenty of angle here above the three. That's the wrap the le upper left hand corner coming two cushions out. Trying to float just past the six ball for position on the four in the lower left. Oh, if he rubs the six, he might get snookered. Okay, nice. Nice shot. And I think he's falling a little funny here. Yeah. Can't quite punch above. He can for a little, take a little distance on the five, which is what I recommend. He's going forward? No, he's going to punch this ball. Okay, threading the needle there. That was a wobbler. He looks to be wound up very tightly. Sanchez Ruiz. A bit light there with the cue ball as well. He could have really used another four or five inches how Katie should he should handle this one word terrible terrible shot and that's two eight balls he's missed early in this match and you saw a little flinch little flinch right there a little shake 
So Great Britain really all three wins early in this in this match from some gifts from the Spaniards. You can't keep doing that and hope to get away with it on a long term basis. David Alcady missed the eight ball. He would never miss in a month of Sundays if not under a mountain of pressure. And so Great Britain lead by three racks to two. Rack number six. The current score is three to two in favor of Great Britain. Spain is breaking. That was a pretty decisive break though. Yeah, and I thought the pool gods were going to get him there. Watch this little kiss he takes. It looks like it's going in the corner. It looks like it's still going in the corner and then the eight comes away and a nice little bump. So a decision here, you'll notice the three doesn't pass the six. It's not a hard combination. But it's not the easiest to hold position for and. It's not the easiest to get it on the other side of the three and without being pretty thin on the three. I think that's the route he'll go. So he'll put a little bit of right side on this a little spin probably go in. Oh he really he whacked it. I don't understand. He must have been trying to go into the nine with the cue ball. But even if you're still not going to hit it at that speed. Got a couple. He's got a couple safeties here. He's going to use the seven nine one way or another. Whether he floats the three past the seven nine and cue ball over near the six, or if he just comes to the other side with the cue ball. Oh, is that enough? Is that enough? I don't know. It's it's got him. That's for sure. But it's probably not as much as he wanted. Now Great Britain will have a choice as far as this jump shot. Attention, please. Taking the extension because he had to walk back for the jump cue. He'll see that by Jason sometimes. It's almost like he's trying to calm himself a little bit and slow the Great Britain team down. He does it in singles play as well. Yeah, and again, Al Cage could have used a lot more uh, with the three ball up table, probably past the side. Now the seven nine, they have to look. I believe does it play in the side? I think it does. If not, he may look to break it out right here. There's a couple of different ways too. He doesn't have to draw into it. I don't believe. I think he could come to the rail and back up, but oh no. And a bit fortunate there, missing that ball and, and not breaking out the 7 9, and I think snookering Spain. Middle pocket potting was the bane of Chris Milling's life in the previous round. Well, just kind of drove that one into the face of the pocket. At a lighter speed, it would have gone, but with that much force. Okay, pretty nice there. Problem with this is you should be up behind the eight after this shot's over with. I think anyways. Now the key to this shot on this slick table is don't try to get all the way to up underneath the eight. A, a foot back of it, 10 inches back of it, that's fine. A lot of people try to get all the way up underneath it and you let the cue ball leak two rails. Uh, very nice. Excellent. Just jumping over the corner of the eight. 
in without touching the sides. Well, not a very convincing stroke there, Phil. Not by any means. It almost looked like he was steering that one in. Really wanted to get above the eight to make it easy to get back on this nine. And now sitting right on a funny spot. He's going to have to draw this. I think going forward is taking a big chance at missing this eight ball. Well, he got plenty of shoulder into that, but it went into the pocket cleanly, in fairness to him. David Alcady has missed a couple of eight balls already. Surely not the nine as well. Surely. Well, if he dead rolls it, if he kind of babies it again, this ball could grab a little bit and go into the bottom rail. Needs to put a little speed. Well done. It's all tied up again. Spain three, Great Britain three, neither team demonstrating any fluency or indeed authority. Welcome back to the last quarter final here at the World Cup of Pool. All level before the break, then the hosts ran out the seventh rack to take the lead. In the eighth, Spain opted for safety play after the break. Great Britain looked to be on for another rack, but a rare mistake from Jason Shaw saw Spain return to the table and level the match. But Britain weren't to be denied and took the ninth. This is now the tenth. He won the World Masters in March in Gibraltar, did David Alcady, in front of so many friends and supporters. Tonight, it's a very different kettle of fish. The vast majority of the support is for the opposition, as you might expect, for GB. And Spain has continually got a lot of clusters around the spot, but these, this cluster of four might be OK with the 4-9 combination, possibly. They have a nice starter on the one. It's a little thin and to the side, but something that Ruiz should be able to handle. He'd like to hit it with a high ball and go around the five, like three rails for the two, and possibly the same pocket. I think the four nine is land very makeable. No, he doesn't want to bump this four. That's a big mistake. Oh my goodness. Big mistake there. And now the cluster really is a cluster. And you could tell right uh, right when he hit it that David LK was asking for the cue ball to slow down. So now it's going to most likely be some type of safety off the off the four after making the two. OK, so that tells me he's going to chip the four, go to the rail and land behind the seven. But the thing is. He has to hit it somewhat thick to go to the rail. He can't hit it uber thin. And get to the rail and up behind the seven. So when he hits it a little thick, that's going to open up the six and eight. You can see there's an angle on the six hitting the eight. Those will spread. So if he plays that shot, he's really got to bury the cue ball. Extension, please. So really. Not the best places. He should have got much thinner on this, meaning the cue ball should have went been a little bit more towards he's where he's standing. And is he going to kiss the eight? Is he going to kiss the eight right here? OK, so pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure I would look at the jump cue here. There's a long rail kick uh, that, that these players that when you're sitting right down the line, you should hit the four off the long rail. And you can see all this congestion on the bottom rail here. A lot of opportunity to get a safety out of it. Where the jump shot's a little bit more me or you, win or lose. 
Hmm. I really don't not in love with the jump shot here and it's so close. It's not easy. Wow. Oh. Foul. Table scratch. Oh. The air sucked out of this room. It was That's a fun, cracking pot on the four to the middle. The only problem was into the other middle pocket went the cue ball. Great Britain now guilty of four fouls in this match. Zero for Spain. And I think that's why they're keeping in touch. So a bit of wind knocked out of the cells by that brutal scratch off one heck of a jump shot on the four by Jason. Now Spain lined up to tie the match again at five. I'm really is he really going to play short position the seven eight combination is really really easy I mean don't get me wrong. No one likes shooting combinations but. Gotta have good cue ball control here. Nicely done. Britain can't shake off the Spanish. Never more than one rack in this. Now it's all level. Rack number 11. We're all tied at 5 5. Great Britain is breaking. Chris Melling is breaking. In goes the two. Could have been worse, I suppose. Could have been worse. Yeah, and this is a tempting cross side bank with the three so near, but a pretty easy safety. But we've seen a lot of players jump out of, of the safeties, kick out of the safeties. So this is one he's going to have to think about here. Because, you know, the great players, they always want to attack. with the scratch again that would have been too much to take first a jump shot in off and that could have been a a bank in off okay well I'm not sure what the angle offers on the three but it must have enough to get down for a four nine cam shot and there's a big area there there's a lot of places as long as you just get past it a little bit somewhere around uh, the middle diamond oh my Oh, that was lucky. Melling, I think at the moment, has got a mental block when it comes to potting to the side. He's missing an awful lot of balls. Just didn't fancy him for that one. Yeah, on the cue ball, made you think there was a lot of angle to get down there, and I, I don't think there was quite as much as as we thought at first. And has he has he got a little piece of this three? It appears so. Attention, please. that to run. Oh, and run it did. What Jason's looking at there is if he can knock this long one in and hold the cue ball. Thank It'll you. offer an angle on the Attention, four please. to possibly break out the 5-8 or maybe get behind the 5-8 for some type of safety play. It's been so good with the jump cue this match, I'll tell you.
can Spain step in and go ahead for the first time since 1-0? Something tells me that maybe they weren't listening to Great Britain as far as the carom shot on the nine. It looks like it's laying nice right where David Arcade is pointing his cue. Just a little flick off the four, nine ball goes into the corner. Ooh, he went a long ways. Now he's got a draw off the four. So not quite as natural. You want to just be able to hit it real natural with a rolling cue ball. Still should be okay, and saying still should be the favorite to make it. There it goes. Spain indeed do reclaim the lead. Spain six, Great Britain five. Welcome back to the World Cup of Pool from the Morningside Arena in Leicester, where Spain have just taken the lead in a very tight match with Great Britain A. At stake, the last remaining place in the semi-finals. This is now the 12th rack. Commentary from Phil Yates and Jeremy Jones. Rack number 12. We are currently at 6-5 Spain, and Spain is breaking. Again, uh, Spain get a little bit more of that cluster around the spot area, around the rack area. So there, that tells me that, well, that was pretty head on cut. That wasn't much cut at all. Maybe getting a little too much elevation with the cue. Sends the cue ball in the air a little bit more and doesn't quite uh, get as flush a contact on, on the one ball. Great Britain, your option. <laughs> Looks crazy, the two off the five by the four in the corner, opening up the three, but they played a similar shot in round two. Now, what I like is shooting the two into the th edge of the three and I think trying to drop the cue ball behind the four. Lays okay, just a little bit of right English. It's delicate, of course. Now you can play it a little more simply and just bank the two back up table and come one row over behind the eight. Extension, please. And the reason why they took the time here, I don't think they were, they were ever going to pass this shot. I don't think so, anyways. Okay, so this tells me he may be queuing up, powering up here to draw the ball to the side rail and break out the 3 5 coming back across. Big shot for Chris Melling in Great Britain. Uh, he overcut it and he lost the cue ball. Foul, table scratch. And just not, just miss hitting the cue ball with the timing a little bit off. Start the clock, please. And that is the fifth foul committed by Great Britain in this match. Spain have committed nil. Extension, please. Definitely a lot of conversation over this ball and hand shot. Not the easiest of combinations. Of course, with ball and hand, you'd like to think you're making it like nine out of ten. He could fluke something else in also. Now, I guess he's going to play it nice and soft and bury the cue ball behind the three. Oh, wow. shot. We have the first two-frame gap 
of the match. And it goes to the visitors, Spain. They're full of energy. They're full of motivation. And they're two racks away from the semi-finals. These foul shots just hurting GB so, so much. The milling shoulder slump. As soon as the cue ball went in, he feared the worst with every justification. Yeah, Chris just losing that cue ball because he overcut the overcut the two a little bit, so it didn't get quite as much grab on the cue ball coming back across trying to open the three five, and you could tell he was a foot below that. So a difficult situation right now for Great Britain. Uh, one upside is they have Jason breaking. So it's a little bit of an hour or never. They can't afford to drop to eight to five. Even though they would have three out of the remaining. Rack number 13, the current score is seven oh, five. Me, no, in they, favor wouldn't. they would of have just Spain. two out of the Great remaining Britain four breaks. Breaking. Just would seem like a, a lead they can't overcome. Break is dry. Everything conspiring against the host nation. Well, if they can get it at all, this one ball, they have a nice safety just banking the one around and pinch the cue ball back behind the eight. They don't want the one to hit the two, though. They'd like to get the one down table. Thing is here you want the cue ball moving slowly when it draws back you don't want it to have a lot of speed it just kind of slowly goes into position extension please <laughs> That's a little light. That's way light. And if he could clear the two, there was no reason to ever end up light on that shot there, unless he worried about losing the cue ball. But I don't think that was a problem. But half the battle on that safety was sending the one around, and then it's a very easy uh, way to get a snooker with the eight ball being a, a big Stay eclipse complete. if the one's on the other half of the table. That's a difficult one to plan there, Phil. A little bit of fortune I'd have to bet. I think they're due some in fairness. Well, yeah, that was a tough situation regardless. Oh. Now Spain just doing everything, everything right. A big shot here from David Alcade on a long two ball that he's got to have a little touch with. Could stun it forward, but you really want to drag this ball or roll it one of the two. Yeah, and I don't understand that at all. He needed to go forward with the cue ball, and I don't. I just don't think. I think it, his nerves got to him a little bit there. Feel like he didn't want to hit the ball softly. Could not agree with you more. Just physically unable to deliver as he wanted to, as he needed to. And 
now creating a lot more cue ball movement. Yeah, and that was all caused by a little bit of a decision making, a decision uh, made by by David. They both been looked a little jumpy, but a couple early misses by David certainly didn't boast the confidence much. If you recall their first two matches, they beat Australia 7-5, Finland by the same score. In both contests, they didn't exactly overwhelm in terms of the standard they produced, and yet they keep getting it done. Well, I'd mentioned it earlier that both teams really had some solid play during both their opening wins, but at times fumbled uh, unexpectedly. Okay, a big thin one here. Oh, he overcut it. He overcut it. And now the balls are there for Spain. The crowd silent. Just the draw stroke away from getting on the hill here. Four to the five. Something that Ruiz works on every day. We talked about David Alcady looking a little nervous. It's entirely understandable when you think about the big picture. Apart from the $60,000 first prize, which will be split between the two of them if they were to win this. Apart from the prestige of taking the World Cup home to Spain, which clearly means an awful lot. Remember, he's already the World Masters champion this year. If he was to be one half of the World Cup winning team, that Moscone Cup would beckon. Pretty clean stroke there. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of Euros uh, really interested in that Moscone Cup next year in Vegas. Or actually, uh, this year in Vegas. Just five months away. You can't keep hold of that trophy, Jeremy. I know you want to, but the renewal will come around quicker than you think. And what's come around for Great Britain quicker than they thought is an 8-5 deficit. Britain and Number World Cup 14. disappointment is nothing is new. They can still pull this out of the fire, Jason Spain Shaw and Chris breaking, Milling. And they are on the hill. But as our referee has just told us, Spain are on the hill. 8-5 ahead. One rack away from reaching the semi-finals of this Bedford World Cup of pool for the first time. But the one ball doesn't drop. Nothing drops. Well, we've seen some tough combinations made in big settings. None, none bigger than Shane Van Boning's combination to win the Moscone this last December. But I'll tell you the way the balls are laying. I'm not sure with the five if it goes by the six. The two is a little congested. It'd be a stretch, but uh, if he shoots at it. He could make it. I think it's about 50-50. Yeah. Wow. 50 for Jason Shaw. Sometimes it's 90 10. 1 9. Okay, 1 down and 3 to go. 
rapid rack. Just what the Brits needed to get the crowd going as well. Lovely stuff. Don't write them off just yet. And that's the first rack, Jeremy. Spain's breaks, they have to get by to come, come back and win this match. And not only that, they have to hold their own. They have two out of the next three breaks if it goes to the hill. The crowd's Credit doing, to this, yeah. doing all they can to inspire this Great Britain team. Three more to advance to the semifinal. Rack number 15. The current score is eight to six in favor of Spain. Great Britain breaking. Living dangerously. But the eight's in. The table is open. Should I say the seven's in? He needs the cue ball to run a little bit. Well, that's not bad. From where he was, that's he would take that, I think. Well, Spain's got to be careful if they knock this one around. You can see the eight hanging. And so anytime there's a ball on, the, on one end of the table hanging and you're sending the ball around for safety, there's a lot more op options for the incoming team, meaning some type of carom shot combination. Even a fluke. Extension, please. Yes, the first mistake in this rack could be the last mistake. Should be the last mistake. The way they spread. Okay, he's leveling out, so that tells me he might be banking the one down table, trying to come back up on the three. Oh, no, pretty nice. Is this going to leak out? Oh, pretty solid shot there. So Chris has got a real decision to make how he wants to kick at this. He can kick to the side rail. Kind of my preference where Jason was pointing. I know if he kicks up under, you would think that's the best shot. But the one's a long ways from the end rail. So when you have that situation, it's real hard to hold the cue ball. Attention, please. I thought he might look at that side rail to try and kick and stick the cue ball and send the one back up table. Possibility of a scratch if you if you shoot that shot. It's been pretty good at this so far, but this one's a little more difficult. Don't baby it. You need some speed on it. Uh, this is going to catch the five, and it was, you notice the cue ball coming up table. Just real hard to hold the cue ball once the one gets up a diamond or so. You have to seriously wonder, is it going to be Viva Espana? Is Alcady? Is Sanchez Ruiz in to win? He's hit that perfectly, and it's really about two more shots, it looks like. Of course, knocking this two in, but gaining some type of good position on the three to get to the four down here on the bottom rail. The sweet thing is you don't have to get great position on the four. Again, you can see the eight hanging. Well, he doesn't want to get full here. This is pretty, pretty heavy. If he can't draw by this five, this could be a little, little tester. But again, you don't have to get all the way down there. You have a 4-8. That's very easy combination. Yeah. Okay. So now this will be an interesting shot because the six is there. I'm trying to figure. I guess you just chip this in and go one rail right into the nine with the cue ball. Pretty sure you're not going to make them both. But the thing is, you can't really afford to play rail first and let the four get locked up on the six. Yeah, nice shot. Yeah. 
the host nation in this World Cup, four pots away from elimination. Nearly there. Palms sweaty, heart beating. Al Qaeda hopes his work for the evening is done. Of pool, and the reason for that, Spain have broken British hearts. The semi final lineup is now confirmed, and Spain's reward for that excellent win over Great Britain A is a date with last year's runners up, Austria. In the other semi final, the Netherlands will take on the Philippines in a bid to claim their first ever World Cup of Pool title.